Hey, welcome to the studio today. Uh, my name is Brandon, and we are here uh, with with the producers and arrangers of Oceans of Melodies. One year later, and we are going to listen to it back and uh, just just talk about yeah. it, reminisce a little who bit. Who knows what's going to happen? Man. Yeah, who knows what's going to happen? We might hate it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that is very true. That is very true. Hey, why don't we uh, go around and introduce ourselves and say something that we're working on currently, and then why don't you th also throw in. Uh, your your favorite your favorite part uh, of the album your favorite uh, recording session favorite song or whatever anything that jumps out to you as your your favorite thing you you, you go ahead and, and just say that let's start with you Joe cool my name is Joe Christina I'm a composer arranger orchestrator I've been doing it a long time um, right now what I'm working on is I'm starting a nonprofit my wife and I are starting a nonprofit for at risk youth Avanti Music O C and I'm also uh, going to be completing my one act uh, opera in one act called Luz Amaroscuro, Light of the Dark Sea. So, Spanish Which language opera. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, very cool. And uh, about the album itself, I think it's kind of the defining moment for me. You know, you never know, as an arranger, you never know what you're going to get. Mm. And if you get somebody, you know, paying a nice chunk of money to get an orchestra to come in, you always feel like there's like a lot of pressure. I remember mm. back in December when we did the Skype session, we were doing the strings. Uh, it's four o'clock in the morning because of the time difference in Prague. We're driving down the road, and, and Brandon calls me. He goes, "Hey, man, the, the session started. You know, you need to get here." So I get in, and I <laughs> come in like ten minutes after they're already rolling it, right? Yeah. And I walked in, and I just heard this beautiful orchestral music, and I, I didn't even think it was my stuff. I was mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, so "That's like a really cool movie project," you know. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of hit me that. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, you know, Holy Spirit works, and it's like I, I don't think I'm good enough to actually do that. But it, it was fantastic. So that was the moment for me, that rainy December morning, yeah, that coming was, into the studio. That was, a, that that was, was a, very cool. And that that I remember that moment. That was kind of like where the album started coming, becoming alive. Yeah, in, in, a, in a sense. Yeah, well, Whereas, yeah. oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a real thing. Before yeah. that, everything. You know. Before that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we need a Joe. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joe did all of the. Um, Strings and and horn arrangements oh. for for the for the albums. Tiago. Mm -hmm. Hey, my name is Tiago Tierco, and I'm working right now. Well, I'm the the director of the music department at Eastside Christian Church, and um, I also do a lot of studio work. So welcome to my studio as well. Like yeah. so, well. and uh, so I'm doing Roger Hudson's new album, Christian Artist, really good, and. Uh, and a new Torre Fuerte album with Hector Hermosillo, which is the pastor of the Hispanic Church at, at East Side as well. So it's gonna so some fun stuff going on. But my favorite moment about the album, I would say, it's just it's hard. It's just like a kid. You gotta and I see and this is the first project that I work on in a in my, in my whole life that I would say that I it's not one song, it's one body. Mm -hmm. It's in, in the way well, Brent and I, we, we've been praying about this album and, and talking about it forever. Like, way before we actually sat down and said, okay, we're going to do it. But from the beginning, we, like, we had the idea of having one big song. Yeah. And, uh, well, and I think this is my yeah. favorite thing about this album. It's, just, it's, a, it's one piece. It's one mm -hmm. piece put together. And everything was, was just just flowing. It's just, it's amazing. And it was a challenge to mix and, and do the whole thing. Yes. It, we didn't actually mix song by song. It was like mixing the whole album. Yeah. We, an hour of music. So I felt like I was mixing a movie. Right. Which, which it was. We recorded much. the entire album on one session. Mm -hmm. How many, how many tracks is that? Well, we had over with the orchestra, when you edit orchestra, I don't even know. I think, I, think I ran out of tracks. I, we ran out of <laughs> yeah, tracks a couple we times. Maxed <laughs> out, we maxed out Pro Tools like several times. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, had we had to bounce to it back. And a lot of things. If you, if you estimate how many individual tracks we recorded. I would we say recorded. 128 or something way like this. It was that. way more? Way more than that. <laughs> I would say like 500. 500! <laughs> no, I would say, I would say something like close to 200, 250. Probably. Because we, uh, like tracks, it was and the, that much. And the cool thing is like, even drums, everybody, when we did the whole thing, you can actually hear some stuff in the album. Like, we never muted. Mm. When the drums were not playing, mm. they were still alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody was 
it was it was a great thing because it was we were breathing as yeah. a body as yeah. a, I mean the <laughs> band the choice yeah. of the musicians everybody was it felt like a live album it's yeah. a very authentic yeah. way to yeah, yeah. Really organic. we, we yeah. wanted to do that organic from the beginning no crazy overdubs or everything had to sound we, we we had to be able to do that live right and that's the main thing but the orchestra of course yeah mm. well maybe. one day yeah, maybe. we'll get to that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome Linnell. All right, my name is Linnell Andrade, and uh, I co-produced the album with Tiago. He didn't say that he was a producer. Yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's good. That's yeah, good. But I co-produced with him. And uh, my favorite part, like, as Tiago said, like the, the entire experience was a great experience. But I think, like, thinking back right now, my favorite part of the album was actually recording the BGVs because. Mm the the background singers they brought so much to the album and uh it just made everything glued together yeah plus the other uh, my one of my favorite parts as well was when we were recording the 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 pre-production part mm. the just the guitars and vocals that was a, it's a great fun part to to yeah. do it uh as far as the things that i'm doing right now i just recorded the World Cup main theme with Tiago. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. For with David Corey. We like Coca-Cola. soccer. Yeah. yeah. You, you do Brazilian, really? so World Cup in Brazil. I won't mention Brazil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you from Tiago? Uh Brazil. Okay. okay. Alabama actually born and raised. Oh. Alabama. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and I uh, just produced this band called Bonavox that just won the Grammy competition. Wow. And uh, and I'm working with Pastor Albert from uh, Fellowship Morovia on his radio show, mm. and producing his songs, the the Q songs for the radio. That's, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, and you're my wardrobe consultant. Sorry. And you're my wardrobe yes, consultant. Yes, that's true. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. wardrobe consultant. <laughs> Personal shopper for <laughs> Joe Christina. Wow. Yeah. You mentioned you mentioned the BGVs. But one one arranger that couldn't be here today is Ashley Morgan, and she she did the arranging of the the background vocals, and uh, and my vocals. And you're right. That just that just uh, what, another one of those elements that made the the album yeah. come come to life. It was you know, really really neat. Like, it was really amazing and painful at the same time yes, because a lot of work we like it, it was a lot of work and we had our differences because i don't sing and I'm, i don't like english is not my first language and i was trying to tell them to do stuff that <laughs> they couldn't understand it was like there was some moments that was like really tense but it was it was great yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's neat okay. well i'm uh, ken okajima and i was the executive producer on the record actually it's our second project together yeah. And uh, primarily handle most of uh, Brandon's business affairs. And uh, currently, I'm working on a TV project called Real Music Live, which is uh, bringing live music uh, onto network TV again, where we are uh, basically making sure that everyone's playing everything live, no mm. tracks, no sequencers, wow. just yeah. everything live. And what some of today's to? top acts. <laughs> what a what an original <laughs> idea! <laughs> that is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> along with some up-and-coming acts and then some acts from the past and so mm. uh, we're working on that right now um, had our pilot on NBC uh, after Saturday Night Live uh, earlier in the year and so looking forward to having something on the air again uh, by fall mm. um, favorite part of this project gosh there's so many so many great ones uh, but the one that I, I capture is uh, when uh, when the CDs were finally pressed and uh, had a chance to deliver those to Brandon in the parking lot of the Atrium Hotel mm -hmm. right across from John Wayne Airport and, and to see the look on, on Brandon's face and uh, we captured that on Facebook uh -huh. and uh, that was just a great <laughs> moment because um, I've always sensed that um, Brandon your heart has always been true and uh, honorable and just uh, your life and your heart just shows that you love the Lord so mm -hmm. much and that is captured on this project. Uh, along with the whole team's involvement and uh, it's just exciting to be there and to see, make that delivery and and to show you the final product mm. of the uh, the CD itself was just a great, it great was like moment. a culmination of uh, two years of hard hard work and uh, you, you can 
just hearing what these people are doing, you, you get the idea that this is a real, a real all-star team uh, that that's come come together. Um, before before we get started, I'll, I'll just I, I wrote down a few things just to talk about the creative process that we went, we went through just to re review that. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, this was a two year, yeah. uh, two year extensive right. process where we spent a, a, a year writing. I wanted to make sure I, I, I wrote at least 40 songs mm -hmm. before, um, before writing or before recording this, this album. Mm -hmm. And so, so we did that. And then I remember this really painful process with, uh, Chiago and Linnea where we, I, I would play, I would just go over to, Chicago's apartment, play them a song, and and they go, oh that one's that one's great, or and most of the times that one's terrible, that one's terrible, that one's terrible, that's, that's, terrible. that's, so that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. It was awesome for yeah, me though. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, it was it was it was really hard because you know, these are like your children that that yeah, <laughs> yeah. tough. And uh, but just just to kind of, it, it was uh, a growing experience for me in the in the sense where I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna even though this is this is my uh, ultimately my artistic expression, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put put myself uh, under under the wisdom of, of others and make this be a, a mm -hmm. joint a joint process mm -hmm. um, was was hard for me, but it was it was uh, ultimately it was it was it was beautiful in, in the sense that I felt like I I, I was growing in that yeah. in that. So then we we cut, we narrowed all those songs down mm -hmm. to about eight, yeah. and then we added a hymn, an instrumental. And um, a song that I wrote when I was 16. We'll get to that in a, yeah. in a little yeah. bit uh, more than worthy. And um, a, a, and then from from there we did acoustic demos. Yeah. And then we we gathered, you know, we, we burnt these these acoustic demos and passed them out to about 50 of our friends, yeah. and with with the with the lyrics and and gave them a little homework assignment. Of <laughs> go through, go listen listen to these and just just tell us if you like it or if you don't like it. And if you don't like it, what don't you like about it? And, and that was an, another refining process to this, mm -hmm. to this project that I think uh, made it uh, super, super tight yeah. um, in, in a sense. Um, and I've, I've never worked uh, this hard on anything mm -hmm. before. And so to, uh, like you were saying, that, that, that moment where we actually got the physical CDs, I was like, oh my gosh, this... Here it is, you know. It is. It's, a, it's amazing. All, all this, all of this dreaming. Um, a lot of people ask the question, "What, um, what does Oceans of Melodies mean?" Like, it's, it's kind of a, a unique, a unique title. And uh, ultimately, Oceans of Melodies is uh, when, when you know, we spend so much time trying to trying to describe God, even though we know that He is uh, in, indescribable. Or there's no possible way that we could put words to uh, His character. Uh, who he is, what 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 he's done, and um, but but nevertheless, we still we still spend time trying to uh, understand understand God a little bit more each day, and and, and that's 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 great because we you know we're diving into Word and we're we're in prayer and we're in uh, we're in Christian community and just just trying to discover God a little bit more every single day. And for for where I was two years ago, and still. Still figuring this out. The best, the best I know how to describe God is that God is a lot like the ocean, uh, where where it's it's so it's so beautiful that the the ocean and, and at the same time there's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of mystery about about the ocean. I don't know if the statistic still holds true, but at one point we knew more facts about the solar system than we do about the about our own oceans. Which is just, yeah, which is just crazy, and we could spend for we could spend our entire lives trying to uh, uh, understand mm -hmm. understand the ocean, and the reality is, is that we we can never we can never spend enough time in our in our entire lives to to explore all that the ocean has mm -hmm. to offer, and there's there's some depth there, and we we go to the ocean, we enjoy we enjoy the waves, and uh, we we love to dive in, and, and at the same time there's this uh, there's this there's a sense that. This thing could kill Danger. me. Respect. You know, like like I don't know what's yeah. on. I don't know what's underneath <laughs> yeah. here. You yeah. know, like it's it's yeah. dangerous. It's more powerful than I'll ever be. Yeah. It's yeah. It, and that and that's that's so crazy to yeah. me. And we have so many scientists that are trying to trying to gather as much information about the ocean, and explore that as much as possible. And at the same at the same time, it's understood and appreciated by children. Mm -hmm. And 
and I think that's so so much like God that he's yeah. that he's so so mighty and he's so complex and he's capable of anything. He's so powerful and yet human children are drawn to the 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 beauty and the simplicity of of his of his character. And I think that's really neat. God is also like music to me when I was getting my degree in music. Um, at Vanguard, uh, what every single music theory class that I took the one thing that I learned more than anything was that I don't know anything. Right. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> the more you know, the, the, the less you know. Right. And yeah. you, you know this as, oh. as, a, as an arranger, I'm sure, for, for yeah. orchestral stuff. It's just, there's, there's just so much, there's yeah. so much oh. stuff there. And yet, um, you, can, you can appreciate, yeah. anybody can appreciate music. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so much ingrained into every single culture that has ever been existed mm -hmm. is this artistic expression of of, of music and I, I like to say um, that when I, when I'm playing my guitar sometimes I think there there's so much untapped musical oh. potential that is in it just in these six strings that I don't I, I, I don't even know what to do with uh, with these the same 12 notes that, that we have and yet there's countless I mean, even uh, if you take a possibilities. One, even if you take a one piece, it's like I, I bought a fourteen ninety five score through Mahler's uh, Second Symphony, right? Yeah. And you just go through that, and I look at this book, and I'm, I'm going through the score pages. I, it would take me a lifetime just to, just to, just to kind of interpret this one piece. Mm. So we as musicians, just, we can only get a little piece of it at a time. Yeah. It's just like a little drops. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so crazy. So oceans of melodies is really the fusion of those 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 two ideas, like. Uh, uh, John, the, in the Gospel of John, he he, descri he describes uh, Jesus as light mm -hmm. and as water, yeah. primarily, and those are seemingly two two very different things, but such a beautiful description of, of who God is. And um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's let's press play, and we're going to uh, do some reminiscing here.